Amen. All right, there in verse number 9, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 9, it says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness. And that's the title of my sermon tonight, is Women Professing Godliness. And there's three aspects of being a godly woman that I want to talk about tonight. One is to the ladies, how to be a godly woman. The, the second will be to the men, how to treat a godly woman. And then the third to the single men, how to find a godly woman. Mm -hmm. Alright, this is a real problem, so we're, oh, yeah. the Bible has a real answer for it. All right. So first of all, ladies, how do you become a godly woman according to the scriptures? Look at verse number four. Well, uh, stay where you're at. In 1 Timothy 5, he says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So the Bible does teach that a woman's purpose in life is to bear children. A man cannot do that. You know, and today in American society, things are so crossed up. We have women running corporations and men staying, staying at home. And listen, I'm not opposed to women business owners, but you know, God's design for a woman is to be a mother. That is something that a man can never accomplish. And you know, I'm not jealous of that. I'm not envious of that. That's a purpose that God has for them. And I know the, the lines are blurred today. Everything is confusing. The devil wants to put mom in the workplace and it wants you to ship your kids off to the public full system so they can indoctrinate them and dumb them down. You know, let the TV be the babysitter, that sort of thing. But God has a lot of respect. And He sees a lot of value in a woman that's willing to say, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to bear children. I'm going to raise them up. I'm going to do what I see what is right according to the Bible, what pleases God. And young ladies that are unmarried, you need to consider this. And ladies that are already married, that I know sometimes being a mom is very difficult. Having met multiple children is a very, very difficult task. And I don't want you to get disheartened in it. I want you to be encouraged that you have a great reward. I heard a wise pastor make this statement one time. How many men that are in here that are great soul winners go out every week? How many men could it be said of that you have a handful of other men that you've taught to do likewise. A handful, just a few that you could say, I can point to a couple guys that they're saved, they're living for God, they're doing it right, and yet moms do that. If a mom is being a godly mom, they're doing just that. And I think, I think it's a brilliant statement. Yeah. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. That's the biblical pattern. So moms are to be, you know, the Bible says keepers at home taking care of business at home. And in today's society, I mean, if you, if you really did a number crunch, a lot of times you're better off, instead of having both going out into the world and working, two brand new car notes, eating out more often because mom can't fix the food. You know, you find yourself actually going negative where you have to keep in this system and it just simply doesn't work. The Bible also teaches that the mother is to be a lawgiver in the house. During the absence of the father, Proverbs teaches this, mom sets the rules, mom takes care of business, and as a father, it's your responsibility to reinforce that. Yep. We were talking about, about when to chastise earlier before the service. Actually, this was before, at the end of the last service, and there was different men telling different stories. One telling a story about how much he loves his mom and respects his mom, and then told the story about how she smacked him in the head and he fell off and was bleeding because he disrespected her. Wow. He fears his mom. He loves his mom. He's probably a good man today because his mom loved him enough to whoop on him, right? Yeah. And in the same regard, I, I told a story about one time where my mom was trying to get after me with the belt. I, I was in the wrong. She was trying to get me. And out of self-defense, I kind of threw up my hands and I ended up causing my mom to get hurt because I, I pushed a, a chair at her. When my father got home, oh. <laughs> uh -oh. My dad pinned me to the wall, grabbed me in a very delicate place, and put me against the wall and told me I should never disrespect his wife. And listen, I say these things because I want you to understand, as men, it's our responsibility to train up children to love and respect their mothers. And as men in this church, we need to love and respect all women in this church with a godly love and respect. And we need to have brotherly love amongst ourselves. And just as much as any of you men in here, if you needed help fixing your car 
or just can you give me a ride? The, the basic things in life, we should have that toward the ladies also. And in fact, the Bible says that they're a lesser, no, I'm sorry, forgive me, they're not lesser. They are a weaker vessel and that we as men should stand in and protect them, right. especially against the world. Yeah. I love it how certain men will stand and watch guard. When some ladies come on Wednesdays, Wednesday night and their husband's still working, there are men, you don't have to ask them, you don't have to say a thing, they're at the door, they walk them out to the car, they make sure they get in safe. That's godly. Yeah, it is. That's righteous. That's the kind of love, that's brotherly love. Right. You think about it. I love my brother, I'm going to protect his wife when he's not here to protect her. That's the way we ought to be. Look, you're in 1 Timothy chapter 2. So the first point is for ladies, how to become a godly woman. Because listen, ladies, frankly, if you go the way of the world, if you want to act like the trashy women in the world, you don't deserve any respect. If you don't respect yourself, if you start acting like the pop stars and most of the ladies that are out, they're not ladies. They're, they're not ladies at all. They're, they act like whores. whores. They act like harlots. They treat themselves with disrespect and then wonder why no one else respects them. Right. And I want this church to maintain its purity. I want it to uphold the position and the value of a woman. God does. And I respect the women in this church, and I think as men we ought to. We ought, we ought to preserve and protect the purity that this church has. Look at verse number 9 here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. He's talking about your clothing here, ladies. And listen, it doesn't need to be costly array. If you're waiting for that next label to come out so you can go get the latest and greatest designer, I mean, come on. You're wasting your money. This is not what God looks for. God wants you to be modest. And the word modest has two connotations. And, and basically, it's, it really all comes back to one thing. Don't have an attitude of, look at me. Yeah. Look at me, look at me, all right? If somebody came in here with a big red hat with birds on it, I would probably say that's immodest. What are you doing? You're trying to get attention, right? Look, there's nothing wrong with nice clothing. There's not. And in Proverbs 31, woman, she makes nice clothing. She takes care. She makes sure her household is clothed with nice clothing. But the flip side of the coin, the warning here, is that there are women in the world, they're so worried about saying, I have the latest and greatest designer fashion, that they're putting their husband in debt. They're more worried about paying so much for the brand new thing that they, they miss the whole boat and they're not being modest. Clothing should not be flashy. We should dress to please God. This goes for men and for women, right? We should dress to please God. Yeah. If what you're doing in your mind, in your heart, you know it's, it's getting the wrong type of attention, it does not please God. Because why does he bring up sobriety when he's talking about clothing? You think about that. You think about that. That there is a time where you can have clothes that you're not being sober-minded about. Yeah. You're just foolish about. You're not being sober. We should dress soberly. And that's I, I would say that's to not allure through the lust of the flesh. If you're doing something that's causing somebody else to sin, I mean, come on, you're guilty of sin. You're causing a problem. The Bible also says, you know, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. And if I'm more worried about the label of my clothing rather than just the fact that, hey, it came from Goodwill. Who cares? Thank you. Praise the Lord. I have something. That, I mean, that should be the honest, sincere spirit. And that doesn't mean that you have to look drab. But ladies, don't be overly concerned about the clothes that you have. Be thankful you have some clothes. Be thankful you have a roof. You know. And if, if, you, if you need clothes that are more modest, men, work some overtime. Right? Do what you have to do to provide for them. Look at verse number 10 here. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So in other, when it says women professing godliness, this is in parentheses. He's, what he's talking about is but with good works. The good works are, how, what are your works? Now that you're saved, you ought to work, you ought to look, you ought to dress like you're a Christian. Like you're a daughter of the Most High God. You ought to act like a Christian lady. Look at verse 11. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. That means don't talk during the service. Don't talk during the preaching. Ladies are allowed to talk one to another. Ladies are allowed to speak to their wife. But listen, don't go in the mother-baby room and have social hour 
right? Don't get on Facebook. Don't ignore the preaching. We're here to learn. And the Bible has an order for preaching, yeah. right? It's one at a time, everything in order. And if it's time for another man to come up and preach, so be it. And there's an order for all of that. The Bible lays it all out. But what is not proper is for a woman to be talking while a man is preaching. Yeah. And the reason he gets behind this, and there's a lot of other scriptures that support this, we're not going very deep in it, is just simply usurping authority. You should not be taking authority over a man. God has a purpose in his structure. Look what he says. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. So like I said, don't interrupt the preacher. And, you know, a preacher shouldn't be a woman. This is kind of obvious. Yeah. The requirement for a pastor is the husband of one wife. So all women are excluded. There is no such thing as a biblical woman pastor. Right. However, once you're saved women, we are all commanded to preach the gospel. Yeah. Right. If you get to the door and it's a man, you don't cower down and say, oh, I can't, I can't teach a man something. No, you're commanded to preach the gospel. Right. Right. right? Hey, if it's appropriate and you're there with your husband, hey, why don't you take this one? That makes sense. But I'm not saying that's necessary. There have been times when I'm out with my wife where she talks to a guy and vice versa. But there's been better times where she talks to a lady and they relate and she gets them saved. And, and I think God has a purpose and a plan for everything. But there's nothing wrong with a lady getting a man saved. With a lady preaching and teaching the gospel to an unsaved person. Man, woman, boy, or girl. Yeah. We're all commanded to do it. Yep. So don't use that as an excuse to not go soul winning. Exactly. So as he's talking about the apparel, the appearance, you know, another thing, God considers long hair on a woman to be a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 11, he says, Judging yourselves, it is comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. God's design is that women should have long hair, and it's beautiful on a woman, and it shouldn't be on a man. Very straightforward. The, the verse speaks for itself. Yeah. Look, you're in 1 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse number 1. Now, I know we just preached this a couple weeks ago, but we're going to go over back over some of this. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that, if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So, obey your own husbands. Look at verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be of that outward adorning of plating of the hair and wearing of gold and putting on of apparel. Listen to this. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Inward beauty is invaluable. Inward beauty is the most important thing in my eyes for a woman. Yep. In my eyes for my wife. I don't care if she has to wear something she feels is drab. She has a pure heart, and I love that. And sometimes women get hung up on the appearance, but really all of us do. Jesus warned that we judge unrighteous judgments, we judge by appearance. And if a woman won't go to church because they, don't, they need a new dress or I don't like this outfit, hey, put a smile on your face, let's go, right? Look, it says, the hidden man of the heart, right? The hidden lady of the heart. Wives, ladies, young ladies, girls, be beautiful inside. Be beautiful inside and it will shine It'll come out. People will see it in your face, in your spirit. It's true. It is true. Where are we at? Which verse are we on here? Read verse 4. Look at verse number 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. So, men, here's the next point. How do you treat a godly woman? The men in here that are married, every one of them, as far as I can tell, has a godly wife. And we're thanked. Our church is blessed because of it. And those men that may be about to get married or have somebody you want to treat, want as your wife, how do you treat a godly woman? Look, verse number 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. That means learn who they are as an individual. Learn their likes and their dislikes. All right? Don't make it the me show. It's dad's time. It's the husband's time, right? Well, it doesn't really matter what she wants. We're doing it my way. You should learn to love your wife enough to humble yourself 
to die to your own desire and say, what do you want to do? What do you like? Let's do it your way because I love you. I want to put a smile on your heart. And women love that when, when it works in order. When things are in order, things are beautiful. When the woman tries to force the husband to do something her way, a lot of times it just doesn't work. It causes friction. Yeah. You know, and it, it causes it causes strife in the relationship because it's out of order. Look what it says next. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Like I said earlier, this is not lesser. Nope. This is weaker. Yep. God designed us differently. You have to admit it. It's visible. Right. It's we would just acknowledge it and say, okay, I'm different. But how do I need to act? How do I need to be? And men, that doesn't mean we lord over them and we boss over them and get mean and rude with them. In fact, if you do that as a man, I think you're a punk. Yeah. If you if you treat your woman like like they're like like, uh, like you're bullying them, I would say you're a punk. Yeah. Yeah, and right. you don't deserve a godly woman. That's right. Amen. It's not right when people do that. We need to love and respect the ladies. We need to prefer them. We need to protect them. We need to guide them in the Lord. Yeah, we do. We need to show them God's love sure. through our own actions. Yep. And men that just bully them around, I mean, woe unto them, right? I think God will get them. Wicked. We need to be ready to die for our wives. Wow. I'm serious about this. That's good. God died for us, and He said that's a picture of marriage. Right. As men, we go out and we deal with the tough things in the world, so our women can stay home and raise children in peace. And if there ever comes a point where somebody pulls a gun, you better, you better step up in it. Oh yeah. You better be trusting that the Lord will protect you or provide. But you know what? You better be willing to take that bullet. You better be willing to lay your life down for your children, for your wife. That is godly. Jesus did it for us. And we need to demonstrate that same love. But if you're not willing to literally physically give your life, then I think it actually show, shows through in just your selfishness and mm. not giving them any room, not learning who they are, not helping them out in things. So consider that. Look, he says, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. If you disrespect your wife, God may disrespect your prayers. Consider that. And listen, for single men also, don't disrespect any of the ladies in this church. Have, have some respect. God considers them a weaker vessel. And if you bully them, God's not going to bless that. God will curse you. Look at verse number 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Now, pitiful, we know, means full of pity, right? We don't really use that word that way today, but that's what it means here. All of one mind. We have the same goals. One mind means the ladies and the men, single, married, unmarried, wherever you're at in life, we should first and foremost, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Our goal should be preaching the gospel, growing as a church. God has a purpose for us coming together, the gospel being the first. But look here, He says that we should love His brethren. Love his brethren. And, and don't get thrown off by the word brother or brethren, right? I mean, you men in here, any one of you could call me, hey, I need some help. Man, I'd be on the way, right? But in the same way, what if you called me and said, hey, I need some help. Can you go help my wife? Sure. Yeah. I ought to be willing, right? I mean, it ought to be that same regard. And I mean, and, and I think sometimes there's an uncomfortable balance of, of men not really sure where and how to talk with women. And I think that you know we need to consider if we have one mind, if we're walking in the Spirit and we're serving God, then I think there, there can be balance between men and women in conversation, how they treat each other. Miss Jessie has an example. I love talking with her. I love talking about things. We relate on things. We talk about the Gospel. And I love her just as I love Brother Graham. That's her husband and I'm going to respect her just as much as I respect him. Yeah. That's the way we ought to be. We should love his brethren. Mrs. Romero. Her husband's in another city right now. I love her as my brother. I'll, I'll protect her children. I'll protect her. I'll help her out. Just as much as if Pastor Romero called me. Hey, can you do that? Yes, what do you need? I'll get it. I got it. I should have that same love and respect Amen. for all the women in this church. But obviously in balance. 
obviously imbalanced. I know we've had issues in this church with men that were inappropriate with women in, in their conversation. So we should be careful. We should be cautious there. But not so much that we have a knee-jerk reaction to not talk to each other. We should still talk to each other. We should still demonstrate love. I mean, we're called for love. I mean, God loves each and every one of us. And He wants us to show that love to each other. This is very important. Yeah. This is what our church is all about. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I love the ladies in here as a brother in Christ, just as I do their husbands. It should be mutual respect. It should mutually be respect. And, you know, that's kindness. That's just preferring one another. Sure. Holding the door for each other. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Use some common decency. Have more respect for the people in here than you do the people in the world. Yeah. You know, we're related, spiritually speaking. We're going to be with each other forever. The least we can do is show some kindness. In 1 Timothy 5, he says that we should treat the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. With all purity. You think about it. When I speak to a married lady in here, I say, yes, ma'am. I treat her like she's my mama. I should give them the same respect I give my mom. And if you don't respect your mama, come on, get it right. <laughs> don't you know what the, first, the, commandment, the first commandment with promise is? Exactly. Think about it. We need to have courtesy, it said, for each other. We need to do unto others as we'd have them do unto us. And sometimes as men, because we just plow through life, we don't consider how sometimes we say things or do things. Or we're not being considerate for the weaker vessel. We need, to, we need to be on guard of that. But as mothers and as sisters, so men in here, whether you're married or unmarried, you should treat the ladies in here either like they're your mom or they're like your sister that you would protect and guard. Consider that. You're in 1 Corinthians 7. Look at verse number 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Right? Not to touch a woman. Me as a married man, it's okay for me to handshake somebody, but anything above the hand, these are my rules, right? Anything above the hand, not happening. Right? I'm in work situations I've had women excuse me. Whoa. Back up. Oh, give me a hug. Nope. Sorry. I'm married. What? What just a hug? It's yeah, I'm married. We ought to have some respect. Hey, it's okay for you to shake my wife's hand, right? But don't give her a hug. Right? But don't be afraid to go talk to her either. You know, and show some respect. Just as much as we teach our children, hey, look them in the eye when you shake their hand. It's okay. Look them in the eye. Talk to them as people. We should learn each other's names. You know what I mean? This is brotherly love that we should have. We should love each other. And, you know, there, there are boundaries. There are borders. We should respect them and still not, we're not living in fear here also. We're trying to encourage purity as it says. For as, as mothers, as sisters with all purity, it said. In Proverbs 31, it says that her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Man, you need to tell your women when they, they do a good job. You need to let them know. And it's, it's not really out of place either to let somebody else know. Brother Lugo's wife painted something for my wife. That was beautiful. That was a good job painting. That's not out of order. We should encourage each other. We should lift each other up. Amen. My wife's friend from Fort Worth painted that painting on the wall. That is awesome. Yeah, is. She did a great job. We should encourage each other to, to use the talents and gifts that God's given us. Proverbs 31, he says, But her, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You can compliment each other without puffing each other up. It's, it's okay. It's all right to I mean, just as much as I compliment Alberto on how well he leads music, he does a job ten times better than me. He deserves a compliment for that. Yeah, yeah, but don't yeah. get puffed up, all right? <laughs> we should be courteous to each other. We should have brotherly love. We should show respect without being inappropriate. Now look at the next verse. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. So here's the next point. Single men, how do you find a godly woman? How do you find a godly woman? Turn to Matthew chapter 6. The first question I would ask you is, are you looking in the wrong places? Because if you're looking for the right thing in the wrong place, you'll never find it. Right. If you're hanging out in a bookstore, look at, you're not going to find I'm sorry, I'm just telling you. right? If you're, down, if you're at a liberal church where nobody's saved, the gospel's wrong, you're not going to find that godly woman. You might find somebody that has the appearance of righteousness, but they're not saved. Their heart is just, i got to look righteous until I get out of Dad's house. 
And what if you get that mess in your house, all of a sudden it's full rebellion? Yeah. That's not what you want. Are you looking in the workplace? Think about it. Are you, I mean, if you're looking in the workplace, single man, for a wife, what if you find one and she doesn't want to leave the workplace? Uh-oh. What if she doesn't want to be a mom? A career woman. I've got a buddy one time, and a couple years back, he's telling me, he's we're talking over the phone, we were in different states, and he's telling me about this young lady he's interested, and he's naming off all these things. And he and I are both very business-minded. We both own businesses of similar types, and, and he's basically, it's like he was reading the resume. She sounded like a very professional person, a career woman. And I said, yeah, but don't you want children? I mean, her resume looks better than yours. <laughs> Why do you think she would stay home and give you kids? Yeah. I, I didn't really think about it like that. <laughs> you know? Don't worry about her professional accomplishments. That's not what you should ask a lady that you, when you're looking for a godly woman. Their desire, the woman you're looking for, should be a desire to serve God with humility and not really to lift themselves up or propel themselves. You know, my, my personal story, I... I looked in the wrong places for years. Back in 2009, I, had, I wanted to move to Faithful Word Baptist Church. I've been listening to Pastor Anderson for a long time, and I was doing a TV show. I was playing a lot of his content on TV, and I kept trying different churches, and I would even travel, and I'd try to find the right thing, and I never found it, and I never understood why. And I kept thinking, well, I have to get my house in order before I go to Faithful Word and before I become ready to serve. I got to... I gotta, get a job that I can transfer, and I gotta get a savings account, and I gotta get a wife and some kids in order. Otherwise, there's no point in me going. But I was totally out of order. I needed to get in God's will first. And it wasn't until I came to the point where I submitted and said, you know what, I don't care about these things. I'm gonna try to be righteous. I'm gonna seek for God's will. I'm gonna get in the ministry as a single guy, whatever that means, just being knocking doors as a, as a Joe nobody. I'm just gonna knock doors and preach the gospel. When all that happened, when I made that decision, God opened doors and I ended up in Texas instead, which Texas is a much better state than Arizona. <laughs> For those of you that, that have been there. Amen, brother? Can I, all right, there we go. But I, I, I decided to serve God first, trusting that the Lord would provide me with a wife. And lo and behold, I didn't know it, but my wife today, she was in Arizona at the time. And through a situation, she was living with her sister, Pastor, Pastor Anderson and his wife and the, the wisdom out of the Bible says, well, you need to leave and cleave. You don't belong in Arizona by yourself. You need to go back to one of your parents' houses. So she moved in with her mom in Texas. Wow. Wow. And God worked it all out. She showed up at a men's preaching night. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I was so distracted, I left my most important point out of that sermon. But you know what? God provides because I believe He blessed me because I was willing to put His ministry first. I was willing to sacrifice and serve Him first, and He filled in the blank everywhere else. Yep. He took care of it. Look, you're in Matthew chapter 6. Find verse 31. Verse number 31, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things, including a wife, single men. If you take an attitude of saying, I'm going to work for God's kingdom now. I'm going to be serious about it. I promise you, God knows what you need. And He'll give you what you need. Right. He will take care of the details. And as men, we want to get the details on lockdown. And sometimes God wants us to submit to Him. Yeah. And say, you know what? I'm in subjection to you, Lord. I'm going to serve you. I'll let you do the details. And that's, that's a reversal. We just need to submit in that area. Let it go. And watch God provide for us. We need to decide, as, as single men, you need to decide to serve now. Be ready now. And you know what? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That means, men, you need to start living like a godly man now. Amen. Right? You need to try to be righteous, pleasing the Lord now. Now that you're saved, now that you're looking for that woman, don't have an attitude of, well, I'll get righteous one day. Hey, start seeking that now. Yep. Seek that 
first, and then God will begin to reward you and bless you. Amen. Prepare your heart for the mission field that He has, for the mission that you have. Because your first mission is a family. Right? Some of you men want to pastor a church that are single. Well, guess what? It's not until you can pastor a family that you could dare pastor a church. Oh, yeah. There are steps. God has an order for a reason. Yeah. If you can't control a wife and children, you have no business trying to control a house of God. God has an order for a reason. Yeah. So get ready now. Get ready now. Brother Matthew Stuckey came to Steadfast Fort Worth a couple years ago and preached a sermon about being prepared. And he, in that sermon, he had several good points on being ready now. Yeah. Not waning until the day. No, get ready now. And man, single men, take that attitude. I'm going to live as if I'm a dad. Having that responsibility. Having that seriousness. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Verse number 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Are you praying? Are you asking God for that right woman? Are you looking in the right church? Are you looking in the right places? Seriously, I mean, if you're looking in the workplace, if you're looking in a liberal, watered-down church, you're never going to find the right woman. There's an old saying, what you win them through, you win them too. Which is why we don't have rock bands. I don't want to win you to a rock band. I want to win you to the Word of God. Amen. To preaching, to teaching, to learning the principles of God. That is more important than an entertainment show. He says, knock. I find that interesting. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Are you, are you out knocking doors, men? Single men? Right? Paul talked about that. How the single can do more for God than the married. Yeah, that's true. I didn't understand that until I got married. <laughs> I get it now. Yeah. You work a full-time job. You have a kid to take care of, a wife to take care of, a life you're trying to build, and keep the house together and find time to serve God. That's difficult. It is, sir. <clears throat> but if you're single now, men, you should be out preaching the rest of us in here. Yeah. If you take that attitude and you get serious about it, God will bless you. That's His promise. Are you knocking doors now? You know, you think about it, there's probably saved men in this city that their wife is not saved and they don't know how to give her the Gospel. They wish somebody would come help get her saved. Are you knocking on their door? Are you helping them out with their needs? Are you going to be an answer to prayer and help somebody get saved? Their sons and daughters all across the city that moms are praying that somebody would help them get saved. Yeah. That's our job. That's our duty. That Jacksonville, Florida is our turf. Amen. we got a lot of work to do here. Right. But we need, to, we need to go out knocking. Right. And if, we are, if we're an answer to somebody else's prayer, God will begin to answer our prayers. You know, <laughs> look, at, look at verse number 6 here on Matthew 7. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Now, men... Are you acting like a dog? Uh -oh. I'm just going to stop for a second. I'm going to take this out of context a little bit. All right? But man, if you're acting like a dog, why would God give you one of His holy daughters? right? Uh, uh, one of the righteous daughters that God our Father has. Why should He give you a good woman if you're acting like a dog though? Think about it. And this is the whole thing about getting ready now. Preparing now. Getting your heart ready now. Finding righteousness in your life now. If you're not living like a saved man should, why should God give you one of His daughters? And don't have an attitude, well, I'll get right once I get one. No, get right, and then maybe God will give you one. Yeah, There's good. a purpose in how He does things. Turn to Proverbs 31. God considers His daughters very precious. And you need to as well. And, and the only way you're going to see that is through the Word of God. Like I said, don't say you'll get it right one day when I have a family. Act as if you have a family now. Yeah. Live for God and His kingdom now. Minister now. Sacrifice now. Get on fire for God now. Preach now. Seek His righteousness now. Don't wait. It doesn't work that way. Now listen, men, there are, for you single men, there are some women you need to avoid as well. In 1 Timothy 5, he says, and with all they learn to be idle, that's lazy, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers and also busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Right? There are women that just pop off at the mouth all day long. They are gossipers. The Bible says it's like a continual dropping. I still think that's something about waterboarding. That would be torture marrying a woman like that, right? Yeah, but God is warning us that a woman should be, it should be pleasant things that come out of her mouth, not just a bunch of trash, not a bunch of worldliness. He says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. God's goal, the type of woman you ought to look for, single men, is a woman that wants to be a mom. Amen. 
forget about her resume, forget about her upbringing. Does she love the Lord? Does she want to obey Him? Because if she'll obey God, she'll obey you. That's the easy part. Look, you're in Proverbs 31. We're almost done here. Look at verse number 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Right? He, he's talking about drunkards in this passage, but he also warns about the wrong type of women. Think about what he's saying here. There is the type of woman that can destroy your life. The wrong type of woman could destroy an entire kingdom. It could destroy your opportunity to have a ministry for God. Yeah. And I've seen men like that. Oh, yeah. They marry strictly on appearance and they hope that God would help get their heart right yeah. and destroy the life. Wow. A kid torn between two households, one serving the world, one serving God. It doesn't work that way. Right. That is sad. Yeah. Look, if you marry wrong... It could mess you up for years and years to come. And men, single guys, you're not looking for a magazine model. They don't exist. They're photoshopped. Most of them are probably demon possessed that are on those magazines. <laughs> I mean, look at their face. And you know, by the way, quit looking at that junk. Don't compare those things to real women in life. You need to get it out of your mind. You need to get your mind pure so you recognize purity when you see it. Right. Look at verse number 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Right? If you're looking for a, one of these whorish, worldly women, those are easy to find. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to destroy your life. Oh, yeah. Find a virtuous woman that's willing to submit themselves to the will of God. Look at verse 11. The heart of her husband doth, doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Personally, my riches are my family. I don't care how much gold I have, how much bank account, how much... I have riches that last forever. Amen. I have a woman that wants to serve God and raise children to love and fear God. That's the most valuable thing in my life. Oh, yeah. And single man, I promise you, that is what you're looking for. Amen. You need to look in a woman's heart. That's right. That's good. Look at verse 26. When at first look at verse 12, it says, She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's got your back. Oh, yeah. She's got your back. You know, look at verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. When you're looking at women, guys, what are they saying? What are they talking about? Are they cursing? Are they bitter? Is it foolishness? Is it the foolishness of the world? You want somebody that, look, wisdom, the law of kindness, a woman that loves other people. Verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She doesn't just sit around. She doesn't care if the house is falling apart. She wants to work with you, work together to build a family. Yeah. That's God's kind of woman. Yeah. Look at verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Thou excellest them all. Look, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Amen. That's right. God will uplift a woman that loves Him. God will help her find a good man. Do you want to be that good man? Amen. Do you want to have a woman you can safely trust in? Or are you more worried about the appearances of the world? Consider that. Hey, and this, you know, as men, there are men in here that are considering an office in a church one day, right? Yeah. The Bible talks about that. That it says, even so, their wives must be grave not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Amen. Look, I'm not saying that you need to go to a woman. Do right, you want to be a pastor's wife? Right? <laughs> Ease up. But consider this. If she is contrary to the requirements for a pastor, if she's popping off at the mouth all the time, makes you look bad, then technically you don't meet the requirements. Right? right? It's, a, it's a family unit. If your family isn't in order, then it makes it harder for you to serve God. So find a woman that's willing to be sober and grave, serious about things. So men, treat the ladies in here as mothers and as sisters. Show them respect. Protect them. Show some brotherly love to the ladies in here. And ladies, you need to love the law of God. You need to seek to please God. If your attitude is that of, I'm going to seek to please God in all that I do, from what I put on in the morning to what I say to my husband to how I raise my children, God will greatly, greatly bless you. God will protect you. 
And obeying your husband will be easy if you're obeying. If you obey God, obeying your husband will just come natural. Look, we've got a lot of great families in this church. I'm thankful. We are so blessed. And I want to help see all of us continue to grow from the single men to the married ladies with many kids. I want to see all of us continue to grow spiritually as God continues to grow our families. Amen. Let's stick to the Word of God. Let's pray. Father God, thank You for Your Word. Lord, thank You for the ladies and the mothers in this church. Lord, I believe that they are the glue that's, that holds many good churches together. And Lord, help us to not be inconsiderate to them. Help us to show brotherly love to them because without them, we would not have a next generation, a generation of children rising up learning to preach the Gospel. Lord, we love You and we thank You for everybody in this church. Thank You, Jesus. Amen. Amen.